So we've been talking about some incredible feats of engineering, some electronics, lots of facts and figures. But the key thing for me is, is it reliable? The body is strong, it's resilient, it's water resistant, and we further improve the shutter reliability to hit uh, a rate of around 300,000 cycles. I think that's quite an improvement because I think the previous figure was about 150,000. Okay, actually, previously on the last generation we had 200,000, so it's still a 50% increase. But has that made it any heavier? Well, actually, in fact, one of the feedbacks we had from professionals was they'd still like a lighter camera. They, they value the durability. So we, it's one of the things we worked on quite a lot was to lighten the weight of the camera. And one of the areas where uh, we can make some saving in weight was to actually utilize a much lighter battery pack. So we have a new battery pack, a lithium iron one, which is significantly lighter. And that means that the running weight of the camera is much, much lighter. So this moves away from the, the old familiar brick? That's indeed the case. The new battery is much shorter. That's um, much smaller. However, it's also more powerful. So we're now achieving 2,200 shots on a single charge. 2,200? Yeah. And it's not just the shots that have increased. One of the other requirements from photographers was to have actually more status about the health of their battery, about how much performance was left. So from the top, we have more segments in the battery meter. And actually, if you go into the menus, you can see how many shutter releases this battery has done since it was last charged. You can also see a percentage remaining power indicator Plus, we've also introduced a new feature, which is a battery health indicator. So that means I've got some information about when I need to refresh my battery then. That was always a problem because you've got the charge with the refresh option, but no one could really give you any information about when that needed to be used. Actual fact, the refresh is also determined by the charger. So when you put the battery onto the new charger, about once every 10 cycles, it will flash briefly to actually prompt you to do a refresh. So the refresh light will flash to indicate that it's time for a refresh. But actually about once every 10 cycles. That's correct. In addition, in the camera's menus, there's a three-stage indicator that, deter that tells you say, where the battery is in its life cycle. So all batteries have a lifetime, how many recharges they can go through. And we have three stages to indicate a healthy battery through to one that's time for replacement. And I think that will appeal to photographers who carry many batteries to work out which is their used spare and which is their unused spare. This, this camera looks like it will appeal to perhaps the wedding market, perhaps the um, movie stills market. But the one problem from what I've seen so far is that the shutter release is actually very loud. I think that's true. And obviously to achieve the high frame rate, the priority has been on achieving the speed. However, we have also integrated a new silent drive mode. And the way this works is actually it, it quietens down the shutter release and the flip of the mirror and actually enables you by keeping your finger on the shutter button to delay the recocking of the shutter after the exposure. So you could actually hide it under a coat or move it out to outside the building even. OK, so I, I think you set this up for me just a moment ago. Can I try it? Sure. Let's have a quick look. Let's just press it like this and so it releases. The, the, shut, the mirror goes up when I actually release the shutter. That's right. And, and I can keep... Or I can take it, sort of, as you say, away and hide it out behind a coat or, or something. To reduce the <clears throat> to, to sound. Reduce, to reduce the sound. That's correct. So reading through the white paper, there's one spec that sounded particularly interesting. Uh, I think it's been called safety shift. But to me, it looks like an auto ISO mode. Is that is that a fair description? I think that's a reasonable description. Actually, in fact, we've had safety shift before where when you're shooting in shutter priority or aperture priority, if it wasn't possible to achieve a good exposure, you could choose as a custom function that the camera then would adjust your chosen shutter or aperture. What we've now introduced is in addition to that in that set in that custom function is the ability for the camera to alter the ISO speed to achieve a correct exposure. So if you're, say, shooting and you want a thousandth of a second and your lens has reached the point where it's wide open, say, at f2.8, but actual fact the light has dropped since when you first started, you still need that thousandth of a second to freeze the action. In this case, the camera would start to raise the ISO from where you are to increase 
the sensitivity and get you a, a good exposure. Okay, but I, have I got have I got control though over the maximum ISO that's, for instance, used? So uh, let's say the camera is. I, I don't want it to go into the extended range. I don't want it to go beyond sixteen hundred. Perhaps I don't even want it to go beyond eight hundred ISO. Is that something that can be configured, or is that? you take it as, as is so you can actually restrict the range of auto, of iso settings but actually in the auto iso mode it will only it w will only stay within the range unless you enable the extended range so it'll stand in the 100 to 3200 range okay